Hey, Matt. Hi, Kelly. How you doing? I'm great. We're live and we're yes. talking about computers. I love being live. I know you love being live. That's why we're doing all these live streams because you're yeah. in love with it and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Good yeah. times. It's also the way most people are communicating nowadays. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's the thing we do today. Yeah. I'm actually going to wait a little bit just to give people some time to join us. But I will start with saying that you and I are really good friends and we work every day together. Every day. <laughs> and so every. this is pretty much our day to day. And we're just joining a bunch of people with our general geeky conversations about how to film things better. Yeah, it's, it's like we, we just we're live streaming our daily conversations. It's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. So welcome, everybody. Welcome yeah. to our daily conversation. And today we wanted to talk about computers, obviously. We have three live streams going on. And just for those at home that are just joining us, uh, we're doing three live streams today. And we're focusing basically on the means by which you might be either live streaming or doing video at home. So we're going to focus on computers with Matt. And then we're going to do something on smartphones. And then we're going to do something on cameras. So something that's a little bit more advanced. And we're going to have a deeper conversations about that. But Matt and I are actually the people behind the curtain, usually in producing a lot of the live streams and stuff. And so it's exciting to have Matt uh, be here to actually share his knowledge about how we've been doing a lot of this stuff. So I wanted you, Matt, to kind of talk about computers because obviously you've been using your computer a lot to do two things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Zoom and conference calls, which we all love. And yep. we were already doing those, but obviously literally this is what we do every day with each other. Yep. And then on top of that, you're also a teacher because you do workshops on the side, um, instead of your day-to-day -day life, you also have a night kind of thing, which is actually night photography, yeah. where you do uh, national parks at night and you teach in the field usually, and now you're converting into actually teaching online more and more. Yep. Uh, so that's Matt's background a little bit. He's gonna go into how he's adjusting and some tips that might be helpful for people at home that are either doing a lot of conference calls, which I think a lot of us are, uh, or you're teaching from home and you weren't before. So with that, Matt, I think I'm just going to have you tell us a little bit about, you know, when you started to go from teaching in the field, maybe, to teaching online. Like, what were the first things you had to kind of start thinking about? Well, sure. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, when, I guess when the pivot happens, um, we, we already had previous experience with this because we hold uh, post-processing courses for Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, and we had, the first time we did it here in Catskill, we had a terrible snowstorm and some people just couldn't make it. So they said, oh, we don't want to miss the course. We don't want to refund. Is there any way we could attend? So we opened a Zoom account and we streamed eight hours a day, five days in a row and like four hours the final day. So the people who paid to be there in person could still attend virtually. So we had already surmounted this problem, but we did it as a hot fix to a problem. And we're like, oh, okay, well, we got to pivot, no problem. Um, and the bandwidth was there and the experience was good and we could still get live feedback from the people who were attending. Um, so we took that lesson into this COVID era we said, all right, well, we've already broken ground on this. Um, why don't we make an abbreviated version of this? We prefer, um, we prefer live things. We prefer things where people, there's cycles of feedback rather than canning stuff and putting it out there. We, that stuff's okay also, but our students really enjoy primarily the cycle of feedback, the cycle of acknowledgement. So we built a course, which the first night ran last night, actually, um, where it's like two nights a week, two weeks in a row, so four sessions over Zoom. Um, and those we sold one out rather quickly in like a day. So we put up another one and sold that one out quickly. Uh, so it's uh, it seems to be something that our students were aching for. Uh, so, um, so yeah, we, we did that and we also started moving, hastening forward. Our other plans, which you're putting up on screen right now, which was, we write a really interesting blog post every week and 95% of them are uh, technical in nature, teaching night photography. So I've been wanting to use our YouTube account, which is pretty strong uh, and make it stronger to further explain these blog posts. So we created this series called Blog Chat every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Oh, that's tonight, by the way. 
uh, we're going to talk through the latest blog post or pull one out of the archive and go into a deeper explanation of it. And that's that's one of the things that we made a hallmark of our program, which was every workshop, you're going to have two instructors. It might it mixes up differently every time. So we wanted to keep the things that were germane to our brand, to what people enjoy about us and having two different opinions, sometimes, you know, disagreeing with each other in front of the students, but saying both of these are valid but they're from two people you could respect should you choose to. So um, yeah, and now we're just doing it live. And we do two other things during the week too. We have the Instagram live on Wednesdays and on Thursdays we do live image review, which is another hallmark of being on a workshop with us is having us lovingly talk about images that were challenging to you. Yeah, and really you're just trying at that point to bring what you're doing in the field into this more virtual reality that people are having now, since we're all kind of working from home and doing more from home and people are using Zoom to, to chat and to teach and to do yeah. all those kinds of things. Uh, you're basically just taking that more visceral experience of a one-on-one -on -one workshop and making it still engaging enough so that people aren't missing out. Absolutely, absolutely. We wanna stay in touch too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how have you kind of taken some of that stuff for, say, for people who are doing conferences and stuff like that and using their computers to do more conference calls and stuff? Oh, day job stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, the teaching stuff. How about for the day to day, like meetings and all that? I've been using Zoom and Slack for, I think, six years now. It's, it's been a part of my, my regular um, suite of tools. And there's, there's etiquette that comes along with those things. Um, so I've, I've learned it along the way, some lessons harder than others. Um, Slack has instant video chats, which I find a great way to address. Let's talk eyeball to eyeball, which you and I do every day. Um, that you convey information faster in a more sincere manner and you pick up those things that are intangible, that don't text doesn't come across, right? Um, and on Zoom, there's all of these other features that come along with it, like whiteboards and polls and emoji and whether you're showing your video or your audio is on or off and whether you should interrupt the person speaking, whether it's a group talk or if you're there to receive knowledge and ask questions or have a discussion later. It's, it's a very versatile platform in that you can configure it to serve many different needs. And what I've been doing is just studying how it's supposed to be used and using it the best way possible. And I even wrote a blog post about that recently. So. Yeah, we put that in the description of the video too. So for anyone at home who's following along, you can actually check out Matt's article. It goes even deeper into just various tips for kind of using Zoom in a better way or teaching from home in a better way. It has a lot of good tips too, Matt, because you do have like gear in there, which we'll get into a little bit. Um, but you also kind of talk more about just presentation style and, you know, making that eye to eye contact and making yeah. sure that people are engaging and trying to bring this experience to something that kind of equals or can come as close as possible to being in person the way we were before. Yeah, it's it just as an aside here, this is the funny thing on screen, you're over here, like I'm going to point like you're over here and I'm making eye contact with you. Yeah. But for the audience, I should be making eye contact with you up up here. And it's right. that's one of the, the little things you got to get used to. Like, this is the sincere way to look at you, but I have no idea what your face looks like when I'm doing this. But it looks right. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. yeah, it's different. People are adjusting to different ways of doing it and actually figuring out ways to actually communicate and make it somewhat resemble what it is that we kind of had before. Like, um, it's kind of nice to have Zoom conversation and Zoom meetings where you can actually see everybody's face yeah. and people do kind of populate the screen and you can at least see people being engaged, see if someone's confused. I'm sure that helps for you for any like portfolio reviews or anything you're doing with students potentially. We got a, we got a question from the live chat. Oh, what's the question? It's from Ab. Are there any parts of the Zoom experience that you like more than being in person? And, ooh, that's a good really one. good question. Yeah, I think because you know, you're a photographer and I'm a filmmaker, I think there are elements to it that we actually do enjoy, like being able to light myself and create a background and kind of do something that's a little bit more creative in terms of how I'm presenting information instead right. of just walking into a room and, and you know being a part of a meeting. There is something that creatives can maybe take 
into consideration when they're doing stuff like this. Like right. you have another outlet of expressing yourself and presenting yourself in a way that is interesting to you and maybe interesting to somebody else. Yeah. How about you? I agree with everything you said. I'll add this that like, I'm just going to grab my phone for a second. Like if you're in a meeting, there's often a lot of people that are sitting here like this or like down in their lap and yeah. just going like this and, and uh, you know, they're not paying attention, right? If your camera's on, there's pressure, whether you know it or not, to not act distracted. But that 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 has a that has another side. It draws from your energy. And if you're on Zoom calls all day, there's a lot of articles about this now about Zoom fatigue. Right. Whereas you're like, I'm sitting attention. I'm paying attention this whole time. Yeah, I'm alert. Yeah, I'm, I'm alert. So I kind of like that yeah. from the point of view that if you can keep a meeting or a presentation precise and succinct, you will earn what people are giving you, which is that, that attention. Right. But if you're not taking care of, of making sure that what you're presenting was crafted and well thought out and perhaps rehearsed, then you're not really paying homage to the fact that they have to pay attention because they're on screen. Yeah. So I, that's one of the things I do enjoy and then I take it seriously. Yeah, I think meetings are also a little bit shorter now too. Like I feel like people don't linger because it's 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 a very I am on stage right now to do something and present something and to be as present as I can be for a certain amount of time yeah. and then move on from that as opposed to being in a room with people it's very easy to like start talking about the weather and just kind yeah. of like hang out in a room and make a meeting that could have been 30 minutes more like an hour when it didn't really have to be. No kidding. No kidding. I yes, it is a joy to do things um, and move on. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're a big fan. You're a big fan of standing meetings. I think you even have a desk that, that lets you kind of stand up, right? Should I demonstrate? Sure, go for it. I know oh, you okay, fine. <laughs> Just because, oh, I'm going to have to move my light. I shouldn't do that. It's so much fancier than... Okay, but, but anyway. You have the so option. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I I'll like just, you actually have the option to actually move yeah. your... Look, it's a, it's a boom down. That's what yes. that is. It's a down. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, I think, so the article that you wrote, we actually, we have a link right in the description for people yes. to follow and stuff yeah, like that. Right down in the YouTube description there. And I think you also have more resources within that too. I think, what was his name, Seth? Seth Godin. Yeah, so he has a blog post that he kind of did on basically doing this exact thing, right? What did you take away from that? Uh, like every blog post, he nailed it. Like he could, he could say the most profound things with the fewest amount of words. And like, that's what being a daily blogger gives you. Mm -hmm. um, is that it basically, it, it's about caring about other people's time. That's at the heart of it. It's like, if you're gonna attend a meeting, the vehicle is Zoom. Make sure that you're doing everything you can to propel the meeting forward, either by being quiet or asking caring questions and then showing up in a manner that shows that you care. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I think those are great tips too. And I think that it's important to kind of emphasize that kind of stuff because there are different levels to what people are doing at home. So I did do a video for our Nanlite channel where I actually showed people how to light themselves better yeah. um, in these kinds of either Zoom conversations or maybe they're vlogging from home or you know teachers are teaching from home. I even have a few friends that are therapists that are now actually doing sessions like through video chat and stuff like that. So there's lots of people doing things in a way that basically presenting yourself and being connected is now a new way of kind of doing that. So we have that as a reference and then we have your article as well, but can you tell me a little bit about how you have set up your studio? And I do, I do want to let everyone know you're fancier than most. And by that, I mean, you actually have spent the past few years setting up your basement as an actual professional studio. We've even filmed in there certain tutorials and stuff like that. So yeah. I just, that's my, my caution, my disclaimer yeah. to everybody, because if anyone is joining us trying to see what they can do on a small scale in their house, we do have tips about that. Uh, but you do have basically an entire studio at your disposal, but you didn't always have that. Oh, absolutely. And that's one of the reasons I embarked on this journey to make a space that was number one, ready to create in, whether it be photography or video, number two, teach in, which we've had numerous workshops here. And, and number three, which has become my office. It was my office of some days of the week. Now it's my office every days of the week. Um, but over the last five years, I've been building this out piece by piece. Uh, I, can, I can briefly show you because I'm 
something else I'll talk about. Um, webcam. Webcam. Yeah. yeah. So, Super so, helpful. yep. Laptop, Zoom, two monitors, my trusty BenQs, the shotgun mic. When I want to switch to it, I've got wireless mics here, my camera, and then of course, you know, the stand up desk here. So, and your Apple, you got to have the Apple. Got to have the apple. I mean, at some point, I'm going to get hungry and I should be eating healthy. And I am. I'm very proud of you, Beth. Thanks. <laughs> so I actually have, I, I, I do not have a web camera. So right there, people could actually see the difference between your visual and my visual. Comparison wow. is really good. Um, I do have a couple of uh, Nanlite Lumi pads lighting me. And I have, I think, a third one I didn't end up using. But this is the, the Lumi Pad 27. That's so it's beautiful. really... I, it's super thin and it's really easy to use and I can make the the light color whatever I want so I can make it basically daylight or tungsten which is a little bit more orange to like match maybe some room lights that I have and stuff so obviously I mean I do a lot of like lighting and, and film stuff so lighting to me is really important so I have that kind of setup but I don't have an entire studio like you I'm just using my home <laughs> but if you don't need more than one or two of the right things you get one good light one good mic and a solid internet connection, you're good to go. And as things start to disappoint you, you know, like you, you make baby steps. You're like, okay, I think that one thing could be better. Just get one more thing and add it in. You don't need to go whole hog right at the beginning. You know, just make your light and your sound better. And that'll change everything close to 100%. Yeah, that's very true. What are you using for lighting right now? I have, above me, I have the Nanlite Forza 60 with the Bowens adapter and a bounce back diffusion umbrella. This is my favorite sort of like butterfly, you know, yeah. lighting. And then on either side of me, I have Nanlite Pavo tubes for the kickers creating this night, you know, defining the edge of my, my shoulders and the side of my face here. So I could, I could show those. So that's one of them. And that's the other over there. I actually also have a Pavo tube behind me. That blue light is actually a, a Pavo tube four footer in the back set to blue because those can actually be RGB and can be truly whatever color you want. So it can do daylight tungsten and everything in between. Nice. They're fun. The tubes are awesome. Oh, show the small tube that we just got in. Right. Like, uh, so there's a, t a two foot Pavo tube now. And I'm very jealous, Matt, because you got one in the mail and I did not but I do plan on stealing a couple from Chewy who made a video for us. So I'll, I'll get them soon enough. Yeah, Have this you, uh, I hear we're, we're only a few weeks away from having these in stock, so yeah. won't be too long, but you know, this one has all the, the, the same features of the other ones in that you can have CCT and RGB and effects too. So it's a nice little light. I mean, just this above my laptop could be the solution. Yeah. Just and that. it can be as simple as that. Yeah, that's a yep. good thing to emphasize too, because I think you and I obviously having the background that we have in photo and film, we have lots of different toys in our arsenal to make these kinds of things happen, but people can just make it a very simple light just so that they're focused on themselves and not the background. Right. And this I, is yeah. 99 bucks. So, yeah. 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 And I think it was the other day we were uh, Zooming with people and we actually asked people to move because they had windows behind them. And so they backlit themselves. Yep. And so the exposure, the auto exposure that the computer does yeah. immediately made them dark and their background really bright. And so yeah. really all they had to do was really move to the side and it automatically made it look a lot better. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's one of the things that I guess you learn as a, a visual creator is that Distractions, that, 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 that's at the heart of what I was talking about in my blog yeah. post. Anything that distracts the viewer from what you believe will help them understand what's going on in scene at the time, you have to eliminate those. So something bright behind somebody's head, gone. That way, you know, make, make the background a little bit darker so they yeah. pop like I've been doing, yeah. Yeah, or you have a mess behind you. So like, even if you have a beautiful studio downstairs, you have gray walls, you have like an art gallery down there. I basically just made sure that my corner was clear and there was some stuff going on, but not too much. Um, and basically not like a pile of things behind you. If you've ever been in a Zoom conversation with someone and you're just like, what's behind, is that, is that all your laundry? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Like just being conscious of what's behind you as you're presenting something or giving information uh, is enough to make the experience better for people. <sighs> yeah, I, I spent a lot of time reducing 
behind me. Like I, I love the gray wall, but occasionally I swap out what's, what's behind me um, just because I have the gallery rails up there and I can hang stuff. So. And you can change and you usually have like different art up every day. I'm like, Ooh, what art will Matt have today? It's engaging to me yep. <laughs> to keep our conversations interesting. This is, this, this is, this is, I'll, this is one of my favorite things this is a poster I got four or five years ago in Utah. It shows it's a geo geologic survey of everything from the Colorado plateau all the way to the other side of Utah, showing all of the layers of earth and the elevations it's just fascinating it's, i spend sometimes half an hour looking at this thing imagining the eons of, of geology that have happened in one of my favorite states and you know it's just yeah, yeah. And you love all of that kind of stuff because the national yeah. parks at night group that you're a part of and teach with that's what you guys kind of focus on is nature and being out yeah. in nature at night and showing people how to like do things uh that they weren't doing before for photo yep that's very cool um, I think one of the things you wanted to show, Matt, was like your webcam versus your camera. Can we see that? Like right now I'm using my computer uh, yeah. camera. And unfortunately, before this whole thing happened where we were working from home, I didn't purchase any kind of converter where I could use my actual uh, more professional DSLRs and mirrorless cameras that I have. So I have to use my computer camera. And it, to me, it's, it's really limiting because I'm a filmmaker. Oh, there you go. Oh, let's say I, I guess I should be talking at the time. So I, I just discovered that there's a, a keyboard shortcut for it. So I can switch between them. Um, when I switch to the one that's built into the laptop, it's this wide, right? And it's a little bit grainy. You see like the high exposure, high ISO exposure noise. It's just like, eh. Um, but if I switch back to the Logitech Brio, which is my favorite webcam ever, I can then adjust my Brio to have different um, widths and focal lengths and, you know, like, yeah. So all that so good stuff, I can- Add it close up. <laughs> yeah, I can zoom in and then I can go in with the software and say, well, you know, like that's too bright, that's too dark. Yeah. And that's good. And I can change the focus and the contrast and you know, and I can say, I really like having the wrong colors or I don't want any color at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm really jealous. You have all of that control and stuff like that. That's why to me also, if I'm using my computer and I can't control a lot of the elements, I try to control the lighting as best I can. And then the audio as best I can. Yep. If those are the two things that I can influence and I can't really make all those adjustments that you're making. It's really important to be able to do that. Well, you got to take care of not distracting people, right? Yeah. What are you doing for audio? So we covered lighting, the webcam. Uh, audio wise, what do you tend to use? I prefer uh, a USB microphone. I don't have one right now, but I prefer them because the power supply is constant. Mm -hmm. um, and and they just, they, they can be placed really close to you, like just off scene, or you can put them on one of those bendy arms and then have it like in podcaster position right here to get that like warm, buttery, smooth voice like Tim Cooper, you know, or, or you could do what I'm doing here and you get one of your, your shotgun mic off of your DSLR, like my boy, uh, uh, 3031 here. And that one's just plugged in to the USB-C um, splitter that I have that I run my monitors off of. And that's, that's pointing at my face here. Um, I also use my professional mics, the wireless ceramonics from time to time, and they plug in the same way so that I can wear a lav like you're wearing, um, which is even better sound. You know, this one, sometimes if it's just pointing in the wrong direction, you know, like you might not be right on axis, you know, and the lav mic is very reliable when it's on your breastbone. Yeah, I actually, I do have a little quick video of the one that I'm wearing right now, which is the Blink system. Um, and this one's really great because I actually, not only do I have a like wireless lav mic, but it just plugs right into my computer. Like I was playing with this yesterday with you and I basically plugged it in, paired it, and it just kind of worked from there and I didn't have to worry about it. And when I shut it off and, put, and turn it back on, it actually stays paired and I can just actually keep it in my computer and I could use it with my smartphone and all sorts of stuff too. So we'll talk about that. Dude, that's cool. I know, right? 
I just started playing with these. I'm actually really excited because now I'm like, ooh, okay, so I have the one for my computer. I might have to get the receiver for the phone because I do want the option of possibly using my phone as well. But this is, so you have basically a shotgun mic and then I have something that's more of like a, a wired mic. So people can actually hear the difference in that too. Cause I think this is a little more directional. They're probably more aware of my voice. Yeah, I think so more than, more than this. Like I have what, three feet between my, my mouth and the microphone. Yeah, and then this is good for me because I'm actually in Queens and it's actually really loud outside a lot of times, as you know, because we've lived in Queens. Uh, so having a wired mic or having a, a, a microphone that's actually on me is a lot better than having maybe a shotgun mic that kind of picks up some other stuff. You thankfully are in Catskill. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit quieter here. Although there was a huge boom last night that we don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like, you know, like when a truck goes by and it goes boom, like, it just Queens. sounded like that, but I don't know what it was. Yeah. It was Queens. Queens wanted to visit you. It missed you. <laughs> I miss Queens too. <laughs> so what else can you kind of give for tips in terms of like setting up maybe like an at-home studio kind of deal? Because obviously, you know, you have a bigger studio and you have a lot of things accessible to you, but light, composition, background, sound, are there any other tips that you would throw out there for anybody? I, I would say start with, I was saying this before, start with simple things. Change one variable at a time, please. You know, like add a microphone, get good at understanding how to turn it on with the software that you're using. Because every time you join a Zoom room or Slack, you might have to change the microphone input and perhaps how loud it is, you know, the, the input volume. Um, yeah, and change one thing at a time and then get your lighting set. And if possible, pick a place where you can be intentional about this because it doesn't look like this is going to change anytime soon. And after this, the new normal might be a hybrid of what we thought was normal before and what's happening now during the interim. So you might want to have a dedicated space that when you enter this space, number one, you're ready all the time. You don't need to reconfigure. And, and two, it just always works. So you don't need to worry about the mechanics of presenting yourself. You can just focus on presenting your ideas and joining conversations and being a part of it. Um, that's my, yeah, my pick a space, negotiate with whomever you're living with if you have to and dedicate it to this. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of stories about, I know a lot of coworkers of ours are like sharing spaces with their spouses. Uh, Jeff Lozell the other day was like, I'm going to go to the conference room, other, no, otherwise known as the bedroom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like yeah. the living room is the main workspace. And then the conference room is the bedroom. And that's pretty much the two rooms that are accessible to be able to do those things. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's funny. My my wife, Mabel, is using our living room as her office. Uh, so she's got a monitor and a keyboard and mouse, and, and it's at the end of our dining room table. Um, and sometimes she uses my upstairs studio, which we, we converted that into the paper art studio, to do stand-ups. Like, I do stand-up all the time. I just switch my desk. But we both know that sitting down all day is bad for you. So standing up sometimes, that would be the other important thing. We touched on it before, but I want to reiterate that um, sitting for eight hours or four hours at a clip is just murder. So find ways to stand up, maybe get even a cardboard box and put your laptop on top of it, you know, on top of your desk, whatever it takes, stand up at least once or twice an hour. Uh, so yeah, that you can be, yeah. which I should do now because we've been on for almost 30 minutes now. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've been timing. You're like, oh no, I have to, now I have to stand. Yeah. My internal clock is saying, stand up, stand up. Yeah. <laughs> I think you also said in the article that you like standing because you just feel like your lungs kind of give you air to breathe in a certain kind of way. And it just yep. feels better to present in that kind of style. Believe it or not, I was, uh, when I was younger, I was in corral and I was in musicals. Uh, so when they taught us to sing, you know, if we sat singing, if we sat down, they told us to stand up and belt it out. And it's just something I've carried through with me my entire life is that you get better voice if you're breathing fully. And you can't do that when you're hunched and your shoulders are forward, your shoulders have to be back and you're standing up. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. I would also say that actually reminds me of the tip that I made in, in the Nanlite video, which is to make sure that you have kind of like, you don't have a camera pointing up at you, like, a, like giving you double chin or anything like that. Like very quick tips is just make sure your background's clean. Make sure you're apparent through lighting, make sure you sound good. If you can't have a mic, that would be great. Um, and just make sure there are limit that you're eliminating distractions. I loved when you said that the other day, cause I thought that that was just the per the perfect catch all is eliminating any distractions so that people can focus on you and what it is that you're talking about. Yeah. And, and there's, there's another side to distractions. There's, there's the distractions you can control, uh, which we're talking about the things that you can directly affect, you know, like right. help people understand. And then there's the distractions that happen during a live stream oh are you talking about the time that someone kind of uh what did they do they they what is it called they crashed your zoom they they zoom bombed they zoom bombed yes okay so for one of your classes or one of your portfolio reviews for national parks at night somebody mm -hmm. actually crashed your zoom yeah we we were trying to pivot um this whole process of streaming i've decoded it now but uh when you stream from zoom to youtube there's an automatic setting which sometimes works but then everybody started doing it and zoom was like choking and getting it to youtube was very hard um and then there's a way where you can have manual steps in between and we we're doing that but we didn't have that yet so we just said oh all right let's start a zoom meeting and publish it to the world and we didn't have a password and we didn't have a waiting room and we didn't turn off annotations and all of the things that we should have done have we done our homework but we we're just scrambling to have the experience happen. So we invited the world into a Zoom room and some griefers came in, kids who just wanted to cause mayhem and were um, saying obscene things and drawing obscene things on the screen with the annotations and, and other things that were um, the opposite of delight during this experience. What did you so, guys end up doing? I shut that bleep down. Yep. Uh, no, I, I mean them. I, yep. I, we kept it. Gabe and I, I think Gabe and I were running it or something like that. We, we just kept. Oh, that, that. We were just kept talking, and in the, in the background, I was like, turn this off, turn that off, boot this person, <laughs> boot that person, put them in yep. the waiting room, block them, turn their video off. How do I turn off annotations? Yeah, like, <laughs> I have a link in the blog post about how you can avoid all of those things too. What did you learn? <laughs> That's what we always do at the end of our day when like things don't go quite the way we wanted to. What did, what did we learn today, Matt? Yeah, I, I've, I like to say um, that I've made all of the mistakes and I, I, I genuinely mean that. Um, what, when I provide any sort of advice when somebody asks me, I say, listen, I've made all the mistakes. Here's some best practices. So these come from a point of loving pain, I'll call it. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, you can't figure this stuff out until you make the pitfalls happen and then figure out what to not do. Right, it, that, there's the other side of the coin. Don't be afraid to start. Just because you might make a mistake, you should do it anyway and take notes. And at the end of it, make sure you do what Kelly and I do. It's like say, all right, what can we do differently next time? Leave the blame game behind. Yeah, just, just what can we do different? Yeah, absolutely. Do we have any other questions coming in, Matt? Just want to make sure to see if there's anybody who has any questions. I think your article, to be perfectly honest, when I read it, it I think it answers a lot of the questions, but just Thanks. in case. Uh, Dan made a, a comment. He said that chair looks very comfortable. It does, yeah. Uh, I'm going to answer, uh, even though that wasn't a question. Yes, it is comfortable. It is. Thank you. And I, and I know it is because I have the same one at our office. That's and right. I'm, Every time I Skype call or Zoom call, I'm always jealous of you because I didn't bring it home. <laughs> so it's still at the office looking real comfortable, but I'm not sitting in it. <laughs> I, I, this is going to sound awful, but I just bought two. I solved it that way. Oh, you're the worst. Don't I am. That Sorry. It was backordered when I looked, but... <laughs> I also want to mention very briefly too, I'm going to talk about this more with Jesse Dean when we have our conversation about smartphones, but a bunch of our partners made a, a kit called home base kit. And it has a lot of the different kind of products that people might need. We're trying to figure out ways of being a part of the solution. You and I talk a lot, Matt, about how we're in this new kind of normal. 
what can we do within this to potentially help people with the knowledge that we have and for how the world is maybe changing a bit. Um, and I think that I'm glad that we're doing these live streams and answering people's questions and giving some educational feedback for people who maybe want to learn how to do this stuff more. But on top of it, we're also trying to kind of put together solutions in terms of like, here's an all-in-one solution for people. So I, I have, they actually, I think Photo Video EDU, which we're streaming on right now, we just came out with the video today. They did a great job with it. And I have some clips from it as well, but it basically gives you an idea of just different products that you could potentially use. So I know we already had like a lot of good tips on how to make a background neat and stuff, but maybe you don't have the ability to do that. So one of the kits comes with like a background. It has headsets that's connect to a microphone. You can see everything there, a little tripod, a holder for your phone. You can use it with your computer. It has a bag that you can put everything into. Um, look, you made an appearance. There you are. That's you your go. little Hitchcock moment. <laughs> nice. Um, so this is something we'll get into a little bit more in our other live stream, but I just kind of wanted to point that out for anyone who's, uh, basically tuned into this, who has any questions about how can I do this simply and not overthink. I think we're trying to make solutions where people can just be like, give me an all in one so that I, I already have so many things to focus on. I have so many things changing already. How can I simplify this for myself? Yeah. And it, it, it's simple and done. I think are, are probably hallmarks of what you should be doing these days. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty, perhaps fear. Uh, and I, I would recommend personal Matt Hill, like it, it's better to have started something and completed it and have the opportunity to reflect on it. Um, if you're going to share things over the internet, I'm not talking about like taking physical risks um, to, to get your message out there and to, to make that leap, so to speak, uh, and, and, to, and then just you know, let people give you feedback. That's the whole privilege of going live with something is you open yourself up to feedback and it's a gift that people give back to you and you should try that. Um, so we have, we have an interesting comment here. Uh, we have Dave, I'm watching from Osaka, Japan. I'm an English teacher and our school is going towards Zoom and meet. So thanks for joining us, Dave, from Osaka. What a pleasure. And thank yeah. you. Uh, he asked some other questions. We're posting those in the live chat there. So so he has other questions, Matt? Yeah, I, I handled it in the live chat. His He, he was asking something at Zoom specific. Um, oh, okay. You know, it was like, if you could do a breakout room from the iPad. And the answer was no when I posted the link in the live chat here on Zoom, yeah, um, YouTube. We've been learning a lot about Zoom and how we could potentially use it to interact and communicate in different ways. It's kind of, uh, it's really interesting. Like there's like a, cre a different creative challenge, I think, in terms of doing this stuff. Like that question that Ab had about what do you like about this new way of communicating, I think is it's opening up a lot of creative means of communicating in different ways or even this has been something that a lot of people have been doing already, but we're just being kind of thrusted into it even further. So I also find it interesting that we've kind of revved up something that we were already kind of doing. Like we were already doing Zoom calls and we were already doing things uh, with our technology and video and stuff like that. And now it's becoming such an amazingly important means of communication for us. Um, and it's so integral to everything that we're doing now that I think that it's very interesting to be able to apply ourselves to it in the way that we've been. And I like that we've been able to do so many different things like this, Matt, like as we evolve and we do more of these live streams, I, I would also say for people at home, if there are things that you even want us to do live streams on or video content on, we really are trying to go out of our way to make sure that as we continue to work and we're thankful to continue to be able to work with each other and create content and educate people, we want to be helpful. So if you guys do have any suggestions, if you're watching live, please send them to us. And even if you're watching this after the fact, I think I think I speak for me and Matt when we say we really want to hear from people. We want to see what is helpful uh, moving forward with this kind of stuff. 100% agree. Leave, let us know what you want to learn. Our ears are wide open. Leave it in the comments. We love it. Uh, we had Kathy in the live chat ask us uh, about a link to the work from home kits. I posted that in the live chat. We'll make sure it ends up in this, the description for this video on the replay too. Thanks for asking, Kathy. That's perfect. 
I think you also, Matt, you focus more on photos. I'm going to pivot a little bit and go back to the fact that what you teach obviously is something that's visual based. It's, uh, it's photography and it's something that has a lot to do with color management and all these other different things. Because I remember when we were mocking this up, you also said that a big part of your workflow is obviously creating your, your set and presenting yourself in a really uh, good way and having everything lit well and sound good. But obviously you're also really concerned with the visual of something and whether it's coming across the way that you intended it to, because you're particular about that. Can you get into that a little bit? Because I know you wanted to mention it. Yeah, sure. Um, it's it, this is about trust. When it comes down to it, every presentation is about trust, and uh, everything you, every choice you make about what happens up inside the boundary of this video frame ends up adding it to the amount of trust that you earn from the people that are receiving from you. So, number one is how you dress. I don't normally wear a collared shirt, but I put it on for you guys. Yeah, I he want doesn't you... do that for me. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> I, I like. It's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> well, there's there's comfortable with people, and there's you know informal, but then there's like sending a signal. This is a signal that says, "I want you to believe me. I want you to trust me. I'm worthy of trust. I took the care to put this on. Mm -hmm. My hair." is my hair. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to show you the backside. My hair is my hair. My glasses are clean. My lighting is good. My sound is good. Everything yeah. about this, I put some thought into. I didn't obsess over it, but I want you to trust me. So I'm putting, I'm making deposits, so to speak, into a trust jar. And I'm asking you, you're like, will you take this from me so that you can open your mind to the ideas and thoughts and concepts that I have? Will you receive them? Right. And that's, that's, that's just saying, uh, I care enough to do the things and I understand the process and I'm not going to pretend the process doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And then for visual kind of, uh, sharing and stuff like that, like when you do presentations and you have photos and different things like that, like, how do you make sure that everything is being presented to people in the, in the right way? I know you talked about color management and uh and that kind of stuff how is uh, how does that work into your workflow thank you um well number one is the all of these displays that we have um they operate off of pretty phenomenal technology but no matter what the technology is they all look different slightly different color slightly different brightness slightly different contrast and you may have adjusted those things manually um our eyeballs are amazing devices they they react to color and intensity changes uh, instantly or near instantly. And what we don't know is how, what the choices we make on the screen that we have are perceived by others. Where's their screen? Is their screen at a zero setting or it's something normal or neutral? Um, I have it right here. Um, permanently attached to my system is my x ray I1 display. Uh, and this is a colorimeter and this device compared with their software, BenQ software, ben, BenQ is my choice for displays, allows me to do two things, uh, calibrate and profile my display. What are those? Making sure the brightness and contrast are right. That's the calibration. And profiling is color. It runs through a bunch of colors and it measures them and it compares them to a table of what they should be. And it pops them all back into place where they should be as close as possible. When you do that, you know that your screen is neutral. And then you can make decisions about editing both photography and video. Uh, and knowing that the things that you provide look as they should on your screen and they have a better chance of arriving at somebody else's screen in an acceptable form. You can't control whether they calibrate or profile. However, you can know with authority, with assurance that you started from a place that was neutral and then you made your creative decisions from there. So if that's the best you can get, uh, it's a pretty darn good start. Yeah. And you're saying, obviously, that's really important to you because you're a photographer. Like the visual is your business. Yep. Yeah. And filmmakers yep. and video people as well. For sure. Yeah. It's definitely something that's really important. Well, actually, uh, one of our live streams, we're going to have Brenda come down from x Right, and she's going to explain why color is really important. I really like it when Brenda kind of explains that kind of stuff because I think that 
it's something that when you're a beginner photographer or filmmaker, you might not understand exactly why it's so important. Um, but it really is kind of the foundation of everything. For certain. And, it, and it's not voodoo, folks. Um, it, it seems overwhelmingly complicated. But with the software and the tools available today, you can achieve the results you have with minimum fuss. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much all the stuff that we wanted to talk about. Is there any other questions coming in, Matt? There are some comments and questions. Um, uh, Dave's delighted that I wore a collared shirt. And also he suggests not wearing a checkered shirt because there'd be more A. I agree with that. I like him. I like he knows him. his stuff. Dave, subscribe. <laughs> we, want to, we want more of you. <laughs> yes. Tell us what you want to know. <laughs> yes. And uh, Kathy asked for suggestions for testing equipment before we go live. Oh, you have an inexpensive headset, lav mic, external webcam. Uh, oh boy. I think oh, I should do a separate. So, oh, we should do a live stream about live streaming in that regard. Like I know that we're, we're kind of like uh, starting small and then trying to evolve from there because uh, that's important to us is to start small, see what we like, see what topics we want to discuss and stuff like that. But we've, we've learned so much yeah. from just doing these simple live streams and figuring out workflows. And just like you were saying, when you had somebody basically um, Zoom bomb or like, what did you call it? Zoom bomb. Zoom bomb. Okay, great. Uh, like you realize, oh, maybe don't invite the entire world to my Zoom conversation. <laughs> There's lots Sigh. of pitfalls to, to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Kathy, I'm going to give you the short answer. And then what Kelly suggested we're going to do. Um, test. I, I spent, my gosh, the better part of eight hours writing up documentation from all the things that I'd learned about how to host a live stream. Um, and that was for internal use. Um, I think that we'll take that sort of idea and make that into a separate topic for live streaming. <clears throat> but basically you wanna control every step of the process until you're totally confident that it works. And in a nutshell, use Google Calendar and connect that to Zoom. It'll create a Zoom meeting, go to Zoom, set up the meeting, go to YouTube Studio and create your live stream ahead of time and then plug in that stuff back to the other two things, back to your, your Zoom meeting. And then that'll end up in your, your calendar meeting. So when people join, you can use Zoom to say stream to a, a custom live service, which is what we're doing right here. I think we need to do a live stream about live streaming, Matt. How meta. Right? It's like, <laughs> I just saw Inception again the other day because obviously and now I'm watching a lot of movies. Mm. <laughs> And I was like, or levels. Yeah. Oh God, no, too much. Let's just stick with the two. <laughs> Start small. <laughs> so any other questions coming in, Matt? Zero. And thank you to everybody. Okay. Yes. Thank you to everybody. I'm going to switch you to being the host. And then you can, I believe, because this is something we will teach in our live stream on live streams. If I I'm, the host. Host. I'm the host. I'm the host now. Now you're the now you're the host. Now you're. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. yeah. So this is a. It was a delight to be invited to this. Thank you for having me on, Kelly. Like you said, I'm used to being a Wizard of Oz kind of guy behind the scenes and pulling cords and stuff. Um, don't mind being in front of the camera, but I prefer to make sure that things happen well. Um, and I'm glad that I could share this knowledge. Um, and thank you for, for having me on. And thanks for having this conversation. Yeah, and thanks for everyone who's been joining. Bye, Matt. I'll see you soon. <laughs> I will see you, I don't know, like a couple minutes or so. To the rest of you, we'll see you online. Uh, please subscribe and hit the reminders. Uh, we'd really love it if you guys join us here on Photo Video Edu. A lot more content to come and video videos from all of the brands at Mac Group. So we appreciate you. Thanks so much. Drop us a note in the comments. Have a great day. Bye, Matt.